this whole issue with Russia is is really turning into a quagmire. And uh, I know that from I was in meetings again here in uh, Florida recently. I had to meet my own counterpart. We were discussing Russia quite um, in depth. In fact, we'll be again uh, this week uh, going over the situation that's happening in Ukraine. The American, or excuse me, the, uh, the Biden administration has really wanted to pull out of the Ukraine conflict because it has become such a political nightmare for them. But you can't always just base politics on how you're going to deal with a geopolitical global uh, situation. And so they were ready to pull the troops out of there. And then comes, uh, we get intel, and, and other than myself making it public, I don't know if this has actually been, been made public at all. But um, the uh, Kim Jong-un of North Korea uh, had sent a request to President Putin to be able to put troops on the ground in Ukraine to help fight the battle against uh, Zelensky and his uh, group there. And the problem that this gives uh, the United States, and of course, not just, uh, we already, I think it's already known, though, that the Iranians have also been wanting to put troops on the ground. But Kim Jong-un has wanted to do this because he doesn't have any battle-hardened seasonal troops any longer in his regiment. Uh, and so it, it, it kind of looks like to us that, you know, especially more and more, a little bit of rhetoric is going back and forth between North and South Korea, that this could cause, uh, this could this could increase the situation where um, a war with North South Korea could happen. And at the same time, they want their troops ready to go and know what it's like to go through a battle. So that's kind of where that's been there. But I asked the question, if this were to happen, you know, you're talking about, you know, the Biden administration is talking about trying to pull troops out. So if that were to happen, would we see a situation where, um, you know, we would end up having that, uh, that we couldn't pull out as a result? And the answer, of course, was very true. We would not be able to pull out. Now, as we know, also, Bonnie, uh, Alexander Dugan, uh, his daughter was killed uh, just uh, recently and, uh, you know, when the car was attacked. And, of course, he was the target of it, but he wasn't in the car. And that was an aide to President uh, Putin. And that is no doubt is very much hit home. The Russians have done a very uh, thorough investigation on this. And then they realize that the culprits that are behind it uh, are the Ukrainians. Now, I, I don't know. I haven't actually asked because I haven't been in any meetings to find out. I know I will be able to find out, though, who really was behind it. Was it uh, Ukraine? Was it another nation? Was it a contractor that did it? But nonetheless, Zelensky comes out, though, in response to Russia saying this. And he says the battle is about to get dirtier. This is just the beginning. Well, that's pretty much an open admission uh, of taking responsibility for the death of uh, uh, Dugan's daughter. And I can only imagine, especially since President Putin has, has a daughter as well, who uh, uh, I don't know if she's living in Europe right now, but I know typically she does live in Europe. Uh, but I can only imagine how this has really struck at his heart. And, you know, not to say that, you know, all the you know, uh, hundreds, if not thousands, that have already died in this war on both sides uh, that should pull on the hearts of anyone on, on either side because death is just a tragic thing to begin with. But in a case like this, depending on who's really behind the attack will depend on how Russia responds uh, in, in coordinates to it. Uh, so, you know, uh, and by the way, his daughter is uh, Daria, She's a 35-year-old girl. I don't want to just leave her as like an unidentified individual. But uh, so uh, this is really going to up the ante of what's happening. And, and sometimes I can't help but think, Bonnie, that when things like this happen, this is the elites wanting to keep the fight going. Uh, I, I was told in meetings that we had uh, this past week that uh, President Putin has offered multiple ceasefire uh, agreements that he would accept with Zelensky 
to be able to bring this war to an end. And in every single case, Zelensky has turned it down flat. And his own response uh, to President Putin is that he would not surrender unless uh, it was not only a, uh, a total ceasefire, but that Russia would actually have to completely leave uh, not only uh, Crimea and everything, but that uh, Zelensky is calling for the pre-1981 borders. Now, that's back during the Soviet Empire, which in which what would entail is that the land that that is actually currently part of uh, the Russian Federation would also be handed over to Ukraine. Uh, and as I was told, that's never going to happen. Uh, and for those that may not know, Bonnie, and, and, and this, I do know what I'm about to say, some people have deemed this, and maybe we said this uh, last week, I'm not sure, but uh, uh, Menachem Schneerson, the famed Rebbe of the Chabad organization, I think he is the seventh Rebbe of the Chabad organization, had said publicly that they would actually bring this war about. This has been, oh gosh, back I think in the 80s, that they would bring this war about, and that they would make it. They would make the Ukrainians uh, feel like that they were being attacked by Russia, but at the same time, uh, they would make the Russians feel like they were taking back part of their motherland. That they were going to orchestrate this. Now there has been since uh, uh, Rabbi uh, Schneerson's uh, speech had been made. It was written and publicized. There's been a lot of people that said, no, this was not really true. This is all, uh, this was just fabricated. But I actually was able to find out through a former Chabad rabbi, his name is Hudos. He is a Ukrainian rabbi that was actually uh, blessed by Rabbi Menachem Schneerson. He, would, he had been a Chabad rabbi for 25 years. And he, it came out and and of course he made he he he's very he's not very well he's not very known in the West, but in the Eastern Bloc uh, because he is Ukrainian, uh, he knew very much what happened. And uh, so the thing is, is that he actually said that no, he said that is true. He said he said I know I knew the Rebbe personally. In fact, he was actually sent to Ukraine to become the mayor, and once. They began to after after he became mayor, they began to disclose to him his mission, which was part of what we see today. He he just couldn't do it. He says, "No, these are Ukrainians. These are my brothers and sisters. You know, even though they don't believe the way we do, I'm not going to be about overthrowing a nation." And then, of course, all kinds of uh, he began to face all kinds of uh, issues from the Ukrainian government as a result of that. Not Ukrainian government, I'm sorry, but from the Chabad organization. So. And, and I do want to clarify one thing, Bonnie, real quick uh, on this, too. I, I, was a, I was a member of Chabad for about 20 years myself. There is a lot of good people that are part of this organization. And you have to understand, very, very small percentage would ever even begin to know the depth of the political side of this. Most rabbis in Chabad are just, they're good people. They believe wholeheartedly uh, the Tanakh. Uh, you know, they're, they're Talmudic uh, Jewish people, but they don't, they, they wouldn't know what I'm telling you about per se. Uh, it, you really have to get in deeper. And of course, I did get in deep enough to find out a lot of this type of stuff myself. But, uh, but I don't want people to ever judge Jewish people by that, because just like in the United States, we have a lot of good Americans, but not every American knows the crime and the corruption that goes on uh, behind uh, the closed doors and in, in these political circles, but it doesn't mean that all politicians are bad either. So just a just a thought to share out there with you guys. Yes, uh, uh, even in Yeshua's day, you know, when he said, "You vipers, you you serpents," uh, in the Hebrew Matthew says, <clears throat> um, "You know, then Yeshua turned to the people." So even Yeshua made a distinction between the angry. Uh, serpent-filled leaders that were, uh, I mean, this is not, um, 
Joseph of Arimathea or Nicodemus. Uh, these are the truly uh, uh, demon indwelt ones that are there and angry and threatening his life. But then Yeshua turned to the people. So uh, there is a distinction, and uh, I I trust that <laughs> we have made that distinction. But that serpent is very powerful, very yes. powerful. You know what did Rabbi Schneerson say? about uh, fabricating the war in Ukraine and making it appear as if they were being attacked by Russia. You know, I wish I had in front of me the very, because it was transcribed, everything that he said, but there there was a bitter hatred towards the Slavic people in all of this, and of course towards the Russian, uh, the ethnic Russians. The hatred and, between, between whom? The Russians, but, the Slavs? No, it's actually between the uh, the Orthodox uh, or the Chabad, those that are in the elite of the Chabad organization that felt like that the Slavic people need to be really needed to be exterminated. And they were basically, you know, that's a very good question. And uh, if I went back and read the transcript, we'd probably get a better answer on that. Um, uh, I actually read the entire transcript in a broadcast I did. Uh, and of course, I followed up with Hudos and some of the things that he said too, so that people could see there was a, uh, you know, a collaboration of knowledge of knowing about that speech, not just that it was uh, some kind of propaganda piece. Uh, but he did say, I do know that uh, Schneerson, Rabbi Schneerson, did say that Ukraine would become the big Israel. Now. Oddly enough, Zelensky, who's also a Chabad uh, a Jewish uh, man, he's not a rabbi, but he is a Chabad member, has recently been referring in the news that Ukraine would be the big Israel, the very same words that Schneerson said himself. Uh, and of course, and he also talks about how that it would be, it would mirror Israel as far as they would no longer be a free society, but they would end up uh, being more like the way Israel is ran with the Palestinians and the, and the Israelis and how they live. Now, it, I don't really fault him on that one there, mainly because I realize, um, although I don't agree with Zelensky in the way that, that he's going about it, because I, I will tell you, Bonnie, and this is very hard for people to hear, that support maybe Zelensky and, 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 and feeling like that the Russians are just really being the bully here. But... I'm talking, and I can't say who this is. I can just tell you that they're involved with the Joint Chiefs of Staff on what goes on over there. And they know firsthand from our own intel that the Ukrainians are killing their own people, uh, that they are doing it. And as I was told, that, that, that they're doing it in order to keep the money flowing from the United States to keep supporting. And, and as he told me, he said, they're not supporting. This is not supporting the Ukrainian people that are suffering in this war, war, but rather that the money is being funneled into the hands of Zelensky's own uh, puppets that are in control there. In fact, what's not been said uh, is that Bill Clinton has actually went over there, and they're using Bill Clinton because he's not technically no longer a politician, neither is he a government official, but yet he is able to disseminate the direction that they're wanting them to go in. And uh, and so that's something that a lot of people don't even know about. And so the corruption runs very deep. And I was told that, yes, it is the Ukrainians, it's not the Russians that are targeting the nuclear facility there, uh, in in Ukraine, and that where the Russians are stationed, of course, Zelensky is saying that the, the Russians are doing it because they're 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 just trying to create a you know, um, you know whatever the diversion or whatever. And so I and I asked, I said, well, you know, it's, so what's being used? It's well, it's mainly right now. It's just been mortars. He said, but you have to understand. He said, what people don't know about, um, or they may know about it, is that in Ukraine, he said about a year ago. He said, even though we knew that it's not going to work, the U.S., some of these people in the government here sold the Ukrainians a bunch of American-made nuclear rods for their power plant. He said, now, the thing is, he said, their system is different than our system. He said, so he, he said, and of course, this person here is a nuclear uh, physicist, and he said, I knew good and well that this wasn't going to work. 
And But nonetheless, they did it because of money. Well, the Ukrainians never sent the rods back. They kept them, and they put them in the storage uh, container there at that very facility, and that's the very uh, storage container that's being targeted. And he said that, he said, we know from our own intel that if they keep hammering it enough, they're going to crack it. And of course, that's... They must be hammering that reactor on behalf of orders, probably... Uh, from, um, you know, the serpents who governed the world. I actually asked that question myself. Uh, that's funny you bring that up. And I mean, Zelensky uh, is a comedian on TV. And, you know, here he is. He's not a, a politician, statesman, president, prime minister. Right, no. He's only playing his part for the elitist, etc., uh, the answer, though, that, that I did get back is there's no doubt they, they did not know whether or not these entities are directly involved with this because they normally don't get involved at, at that level of affairs. But when it comes to the elites that are in between them, uh, yes, they're definitely involved. And one of the interesting things, though, because I kept asking, I asked, I, you know, I did nuclear health physics, so I was trained in decontamination, things like that, like kind of like basic, like a like a EMT that that is for, you know, but it's for nuclear disaster, and that was many years ago that I was trained when I worked with the government. Um, so the 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 issue came out to be on this, though, as I said, uh, well, what's what's the objective then? I said because if you're dealing with nuclear rods that have never been used, I mean, it's one thing a nuclear disaster of spent fuel rods that you keep inside of a containment uh, block inside of water, you know, like a huge pool to just keep the radiation down there. But even that is still emitting radiation. I said, if you're dealing with rods that are never been used, I can't even imagine the meltdown that that would create. And so I said, you would end up having a total, it would be worse than Chernobyl. And so I was told that's exactly right. I said, well, what's, what's the objective? He said, Ukrainians, he said, and this is I answer that question too. He said the Ukrainians are being pushed by the NATO generals to actually hammer away at it and to cause it to happen. He said because they would rather create a no man's land, and he said it would achieve two objectives for for NATO and for Ukraine. They would kill thousands of Russian soldiers. They would uh, they would kill, of course, off the Ukrainians that are ethnic Russian that they hate. And he said that wasteland would cause it cause it to be to where Russia would never be able to invade Europe through Ukraine in the future of any type of war. He said, of course, you can't you wouldn't be able to cross either way. It would be a no man's land in that entire area there. Uh, he said, so for them, it achieves two objectives. And I'm like, that that's like suicide mission. Yeah, right. What about World War Three? That's where I think it's going, because uh, the Antichrist uh wants the world to be decimated before he enters the planet because he said unless people are on their knees they will not give up sovereignty and accept me well i know that there is fear that we're headed in that direction even as uh, people that listen follow kissinger's report recently he also said that we're headed that way um I was told that, you know, it was one of Putin's aides that was saying that, you know, that they're willing to take on America uh, now because they have the evidence that America is the one involved in this Ukrainian conflict, which we are, but we're using contractors to do it. And then secondly, I was told that um, the other issue that we would be facing is that if Putin, because I because I was told that Putin, it's not to say that Putin would not, but Putin has far more ability to show restraint than some of his cabinet ministers do. So with that being said, I said, will he do it, though? He said, if he's pushed enough into a corner, he will. I said, but then the question I would have then was be that I would feel like, though, that if he did it, he would not do it without China's backing. And I was told at that point there, China would definitely back Putin. He said China is only waiting for a green light to step up and attack this country. 
Yes, yes. So. And and there's Henry Gruber's dream right there. Yes. yes. I mean, Absolutely. Russia comes from the north, China from the west, maybe Russia from the east, and certain, you know, I mean, North Korea. I mean, who wouldn't, who doesn't want a piece of America? <laughs> I think every every other South American country uh, well, and North you, Korea. Exactly. And, and you know, Bonnie, the sad thing is what so many people do not know is because we have spent, going all the way back to the Korean War, we have been overthrowing nations left and right for whatever purpose that we had, um, whether it be Laos, Vietnam, Korea, Nicaragua, uh, you know, all the different countries that in South America was for the serpents that rule the world, and none of that money, the American taxpayer paid for it in the name of spreading democracy. Oh, brother! Yes, uh, but um, none of it went to the American people. The American people were just—I don't know. I mean, no. our, we, we've our we've been lied to. We've been lied to, and by the time you know we're over eighteen especially after 9-11, I mean, it's like, uh, come on, folks, this, this is, uh, uh, you know, uh, you are, you can't dupe us anymore. I mean, if we had a war now to go and invade somebody, I, I, I think I'd run to someplace where they couldn't find me if they want to um, enlist me or, let me see, yeah, make me go into the military. You know, do you think that we... Uh, we only have a minute left. I wish we could have gotten to um, uh, Nimrod. Do you do you think it was the main purpose in going into Iraq, uh, being to obtain the old Babylonian artifacts that probably still had attached demonic power? Well, <clears throat> we do know for a fact, and at least I know for a fact that this is why we went to war with Iraq was for the body of Nimrod, not just his body, but as you mentioned, artifacts. Um, and, and what really prompted the U.S. to do that was because we had in uh, possession, you know, some classified ancient documents that said that there is a secret library in the Sphinx and that the only one that knows how to get that open is Nimrod. And that not only did Nimrod know how, but he's only knows how to read and decipher it. And supposedly, we're supposed to face, uh, with the passing of Planet X, that this is a reptilian planet, and that when it comes through, we would face a war again, as we did uh, back during the days of Enoch. And so they wanted Nimrod's body, and they wanted to resurrect Nimrod, in order to be able to get access to that, which also, by the way, Bonnie, includes collapsing the Egyptian economy, collapsing Egypt itself, uh, so that because Egypt would never let us have access, no way. So they want to get control of Egypt there as well. And that's why you see what's happening in Egypt today happening, too. Well, I wish we had more time, but we're so out of time. It's already at six and 26 and a half minutes. Thank you so much, Stephen. We shall see you next week. Maybe we can have time to go over more of Nimrod. I'm going to put that on my notes. Start with Nimrod. Thank you so much, brother. Thank you, everybody, Thank you. for joining us. And uh, be blessed. We shall see you next week.